ones were born in Warrington, so I picked them as my team on that basis. A few years on, and I'm now a season ticket holder and totally obsessed with the sport. It's quite hard to find other rugby league fans in my everyday life working in Manchester, so your podcast really helped me get through the shitty part of the week. <laughs> on that basis alone, you should keep them where they are, despite always missing breaking Tuesday <laughs> news. Keep up the good work. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see what happens tomorrow morning. Well, that, Lee, that's tremendous. Thank you yeah, very much for getting you. in touch. That's a couple of people who've got in touch saying that the World Cup sort of inspired that's them to get right, into the sport. That's right, the Salford fan as well, wasn't it? Which there? is... It's really good, and maybe the legacy does exist, even if it's just in that's it smaller groups. Yeah. But um, that's tremendous, and Lee, thank you very much for getting in touch and uh, and, and continue the tradi- continuing the tradition of Warrington fans whose gender we're uncertain of as well, because <laughs> there's Sam K Rowlett, and we don't know that whether or not he or she's a well, we he do, or a she, do we? We, so. we know we know what oh, gender so, they are, yeah. but we're, we know what gender we we, we choose to, we, to we, 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 cho- we choose to be dickheads about it. Okay, so who's the last one to get in touch this week, Mark? Well, it was Lee Culture who um, explained that Oz tag is flag rugby, whereas Euro tag is tag the ball. Um, yeah. Stuart said we did give a decent explanation of what Euro tag was. We just didn't point out that Oz tag was something different. Okay. Um, he said the the tackling about in school thing though is all about union, the RF unit's relationship with the medical profession. I have spoken to Doctor Pollock. She is more than willing to work with the RFL. There's lots of myths and spin in the media. Oh, so really there you go, yeah. Looking at it, isn't it? Well, they did have some interesting stuff on their podcast a few months ago. Yeah. Um, linking into trying to encourage Euro tag to be played as, the, as a rugby for children in schools. Yeah. So um, all links in, I suppose. Uh, yeah. So there you have it. Okay. Well, thank you to everyone who got in touch this week, and uh, and and keep up the good work. Particularly that anyone who's listening, who's a new listener that might not have felt like tweeting us or, or emailing in before. It's uh, it's always lovely to hear from you. So if you're in that boat, please please feel free to uh, to get in touch. You'll make our little days, and you'll get yourself uh, read out on a podcast. Definitely. Okay. Let's take a look now at the news from around the world of rugby league. So, to news from around the world of rugby league then, and Wakefield Trinity Wildcats have unveiled a new look coaching structure following the resignation of Brian Smith, with Chris Chester confirmed as the club's new head coach. Chester will be joined with his hometown, sorry, will join up with his hometown club immediately on an 18 month contract, with the current Batley coach, John Two Schools Kia, joining him as head of rugby at the start of next season. The two will work in tandem in what Chairman Michael Carter describes as a partnership inverted commas so we got some tweets in on this one as well didn't we mark yeah brian davies who's a wakefield fan what did i tell you still i'll judge him on what he does not what i think he'll do of course brian predicted that chris chester will will get the gig yeah uh, tim griffiths got in touch as well he said never mind chris chester uncle two schools joining wakey long term is the stranger appointment where will they be when he gets there i mean i think they're still being super league personally but only in the same fashion that they were last year. I'm starting to have doubts. Mm. I'm starting to have doubts as the year goes on. We'll see. We'll see. But what this appointment did allow us to do... Well, it's definitely got you excited, and I'm sure... Well, it gave me the chance to whip my pole out, Mark. Yeah, and the, 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 the position... Like, getting two schools in there really wanted you to... There was no way I wasn't going to get my pole yeah. out for two schools. Absolutely. So we did a Tom's poll this week, and it was quite a simple one. Will the Chester slash Kia revolution spell success at Wakefield? And the answer is a resounding no. With 79% of you saying that it won't, and 21% of you saying that it will. Now, there obviously is some caveats to this, and it's, you know, it's a more nuanced question than what I'm asking, but I'm looking for a general flavour of how people feel like Chris Chester and John Keir are going to get on with Wakefield and whether or not long term it'll lead to inverted commas success for the club I think so we all know what we mean by success is progression success from where they are finishing now. in the top eight in the next three years three years yeah, yeah. let's, let's call we that. say well that would be very successful I would say I think there's no chance what yeah. about you yeah I, I fall firmly into <laughs> the no camp as well um, and we did get some there's tweets too much, there's too much to sort out at the club yeah there yeah. is a lot, and I just don't. Think I mean, they do that. have they do have a, they they have had some good young players coming through, but you wonder how much funding and support they'll be yeah. for the academy if they go down, for example, mm. or also if the current situation continues. It's ma- I get the impression that it's massively important for Wakefield Trinity as a rugby league entity to stay in Super League. I'm not sure how well they'd sustain themselves if they did drop out of the well, league. Whether or not going part time will be something they would have to do. We spoke last week, didn't we, about how. The full amount of the 
Sky Money would cover spending up to the salary cap. Yeah, so they're obviously servicing debts, aren't they? Other costs would be able to be paid out of other revenue streams. Now, obviously, there's enough going out of the the coffers to mean that they can't afford to spend full cap. Yeah. So... It is worrying, but um, from, if I'm going to be neutral, then good luck to Wakefield, but uh, we shall see. But we did get some tweets in, because it, uh, it was a popular poll this week. Yeah, people were, were really happy to see your poll again, Tom. It's, Ludo it's, Lewis. it's nice to elicit that sort of response, to be honest. Well, Ludo Lewis says, thank God Tom's got his poll out again. Missed Ooh. it last week and was gagging for it. Hey. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the general sentiment. Everyone's happy to... See my poll. See your poll. That's, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the experience I've been having recently as well. Colin Render said, Think there may be a championship club that might take their place this year. Mm. Better competition means in the middle eight will be more ready for the challenge against the four Super League clubs. Most likely Leo Bradford. I take your point, Col, um, but I think that whilst the championship is generally more competitive... I think that's come at the cost of some of the quality at the top. I don't think Bradford and Lee's teams are as good as they were last year or certainly aren't playing as well as they did last year at times. And that's also been augmented by you know improvements in teams like London and Sheffield and, and, and Batley. Mm. Sheffield and Halifax. Sorry, not Sheffield. Sheffield. Sorry, Lond- well, London are up there. Where London, they sh- London, are up there where they London, Fed, Batley, Bradford, Lee. Yeah. They're kind of, you know... Yeah. more competitive this year than they were last year so I think there's been a bit of hand, not handicapping but they kind of have started to pull level with each other a touch but would that actually set them in better stead for the middle eights when no. they've had competitive, more competitive games of the year, throughout the year fair enough only by degrees but they've still, they will still have had you know, the better part of 15 games where they won't have been as competitive well Tyler Caspan said maybe if finishing 11th is seen as success the club needs serious investment true Richard Tordoff who is at Bulls on Tour uh, seriously, Chester, club has no ambition, and that's why Smith left. Loving the podcast, by the way. And that is a proper Bradford surname as well, is toured off. JCT 600, you know, used to sponsor the Bulls, and still do sponsor Bradford City, I believe. That's Jack Tordoff's company, so right. that, is a, that is a proper Bradford surname. Fair enough. Well, if he's involved, then maybe he must sort us out with some sponsorship. Oh, they, yeah, they can sort, <laughs> sort us out with sponsorship. I'm reasonably sure that the Bulls, <laughs> the ships are with Bulls. <laughs> Dave Cantrell. Maybe you thought that was just sort of that car. That'd do. Dave Cantrell. Only if they give them enough time. A couple of seasons, maybe. Can't expect miracles overnight. Yep. And Chris Macy said, Keir will get the best out of any group of players, but I just think by the time he's in charge, they'll have been relegated. Mm, there you go. There you okay, go. so Super League pod listeners say dark times ahead for Wakefield. One person who hasn't got dark times ahead is Ryan Brearley, who it was announced this week is on his way to Huddersfield on a four and a half year deal after terms were agreed with the Lee Centurions. It's great to finally have my future sorted after a difficult few weeks, he told the club website. I know there's no guarantee I'm going to play. I've just got to work hard and earn a spot in the right way, and that is by training hard and getting the respect of my peers and the management team. My time at Lee on the whole has been superb for me and I have to thank them for their part in my development as a player and in particular Paul Rowley who has been a big influence on my career and of course the chairman and the board at Lee for giving me a chance in the championship. The fans are there have been superb to me and I really hope that the club can go on and achieve Super League status. Obviously it's an amazing opportunity for me to play a great team and in such a great environment. Giants head coach Paul Anderson said Brilliant has great pace which will bring an extra dimension to his squad. He's a natural try scorer which is a great asset to have, and his challenge immediately will be to get up to the week-in, week-out fitness and intensity required at Super League level. Um, Anderson then went on to say he fits the Giants' policy of buying young, hungry English players, and our task as coaches here is to fit him into our system so we can best use his talents. Lee so Ch- signing young English players like Ryan Hinchcliffe and oh, Sam be- Right, OK. <laughs> You know exactly what you're. You know exactly what you're doing now because they are the they are the exceptions that generally go approve the rule at Huddersfield because traditionally they don't have a lot of foreign players. No, they sign in their sides. They sign English players, not necessarily young ones well, all they, the way. You know, Bruff wasn't young, Wood wasn't young, Robinson wasn't young, Hodgson wasn't young, but Ferris wasn't young. But this, yeah. Yeah, but then Hubie, he was spring chicken. There's other there's other guys in there like Jordan Tanzi and Jamie Foster. They're all they're all young. They're all youngish. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. But um, <laughs> isn't it nice to see Huddersfield signing English players though? That's good, and that could be good for. But what it is 
good Ryan performance. Braley, it's Ryan Braley, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So good luck to the lad because he does deserve a, a crack at Super. It'll be interesting to see him go now, week in, week out in Super League because he's a different proposition to Danny Bruff. He's that off the cuff player. So if he can, those are generally a quite a structured side in the way they play. You know, it's generally you know a fair bit of forward work, and then Danny Bruff's kicking that sort of moves them about the park a little bit. This would give them another. This would give them another, give them another the option. They run though. I don't think they run set. I don't think they run the same sort of set plays that say the structure of Wigan from a few years ago. Oh no, they're not that dull. They're not that dull to watch. But what they do is obviously you know, they build. They're on, not that good at making breaks. They build. They build, <laughs> they build on that forward platform, and then from behind that is where Danny Bruff performs. But you kind yeah. of. It gives them that. It takes attention away from Danny Bruff a little bit more and makes it harder to defend against the Magic. I have a feeling they might play him at fullback a bit. Do you think so? To breathe, to to ease him in, possibly so. Anyway, but it remains to see how good he is under the high ball. Okay. Um, Lee Centurion's owner, however, Dave Belmont said, "I would rather remember Ryan for his contribution on the field, which cannot be questioned and stands for itself. He has been an outstanding ambassador in the community over the years." He was always happy to go above and beyond the call of duty for the benefit of those in the community, and he should be remembered and commended for that. So it's actually nice to see Derek Beaumont kind yeah. of. Yeah, he complimented him for on the field and off the field stuff there. Yeah. Just, just not. In, in, the, in the other quotes that kept out, yeah. he just didn't compliment him for how he was about him personally. Yeah, well, look, you know, the way. There will be two sides to every story, and the way that Ryan Brealey has handled this, depending on your position, will either have been with some degree of, of, of honour and, and, and doing it the right way or will have been with some degree of kind of cloak and dagger stuff did going you hear, Did you see Dukes' um, comments before we get on to another story, no. story about Neil Dukes? It was basically, he is what he is because of the coaching staff at Lee. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So a great player with a shy attitude then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Coach Neil Dukes, Assistant Paul Anderson and Strength and Conditioning Coaches Nathan Pennington and Paul Wood have all signed new contracts with the Lee Centurions until November 2018. Lee boss Derek Beaumont said, Neil is a great bloke and he's really easy to work with. Yeah, that's exactly what you want, isn't it? I have seen firsthand his knowledge and ability over the last two years, so don't doubt that. Uh, he has been full-time at the club for some time and involved as a coach at the club for around seven years. What I have been really impressed with are his management skills, his honesty to his principles, in dealing with situations. Uh, the way he has dealt with the past few weeks has left me in no doubt that he is the man for the job. There you go. Well, at least it brings some degree of stability to Lee Centurions in terms of you know tying down their coaching structures for the long term. Yeah. So that's that's got to be a good thing. That foundation there is is a good start. Is not a good start, but is, is good news for Lee. And I definitely Duke's think Duke's totally buys into whatever Beaumont's up to, whatever Beaumont sees as the plan, as the yeah. as the way. Yeah. Um, he seems to be, you know, lock, stock and barrel in, in that camp. Yes. Um, so I think that hopefully will mean some sort of stability. You would hope so. If they get the results. Yeah. It's about using that stability in a coaching yeah. setup now to blend the team together yeah. again and, and do it fairly sharpish ok Hull FC's utility back Curtis Norton has signed a two year deal a new two year deal with the club the 21 year old scored 10 tries in 14 appearances last season having rejoined the English side from South Sydney Roosters uh, there was interesting hold in, on not rejoined. do you want to try that again having returned to England from South Sydney Roosters Sydney Roosters what the fuck it's, do you know what? what it couldn't be easier for you I've written it out <laughs> Fuck off. I'm looking ahead to see what else has been started. Well, nowhere does it say South fucking Sydney Roosters. No, but I just saw Sydney and went South Sydney. Oh, Roosters. Okay, let's try again. Hull FC utility back Curtis Norton has had a new two-year deal. The 21-year-old scored 10 tries in 14 appearances last seen. season, having joined from Sydney Roosters. That's as good as it gets. Well done, Curtis Norton. Yeah. There was interest in him from elsewhere, but the fact that he wanted to stay is a credit to the group and a credit to Hull FC, said Lee Radford. Perfect. From outside the changing room door. Todd Greenberg has been appointed Chief Executive Officer of the NRL, replacing Dave Smith. The NRL announced news on Friday morning, with Greenberg being described as the ideal candidate by ARLC Chairman John Grant. Greenberg said it was a privilege to be given the opportunity to lead the NRL, but understood the responsibilities which came with the role. Greenberg wants to continue the momentum over the past five years, during which the NRL secured its biggest broadcast deal settled on a groundbreaking distribution model with their clubs and had 1.5 billion dollars of investment earmarked for Stadia he said concluding the salary cap investigation into the Eels was a priority for the NRL integrity unit and he realised people wanted a swift decision he said the docking of points and fines were potential punishments if Parramatta were found guilty of infractions but was reluctant to comment on the current case until all the facts had been established Greenberg wasn't immediately interested in increasing the number of competing clubs 
teams from 16 and stressed the NRL was more concerned in the short to medium term with sustaining some of the current ones who are struggling. West Tigers, St George, Illawarra Dragons, Gold Coast and Newcastle are all currently receiving NRL support. Yeah, I mean, those, those sort of policy statements, as they were, are yeah. quite...